아, 근데 브라질 가면 그러면 진짜 이거 하나인데 이거 하나 Okay, so let's uh, discuss the next question uh, here. What are the two steps of efficient stakeholder management? And give an example of how a mutual stakeholder's capability can be improved. So we'll discuss the next uh, two questions. What are the two steps? Stakeholder management. Give an example of how mutual stakeholders' capability can be improved. Okay, so uh, the first one, what are the two steps of efficient stakeholder management? So, John Wei Jin. Mutual stakeholders' capabilities can be improved. Okay, that's great. Well, can you tell me in your own words now, without looking at the... You can tell me the same thing in your own words. Just to show me that you understand it, because if you just read from the slide, it doesn't show me that you understand. <laughs> so what does four do? Just tell me in your own words. What? 
tell me the same thing in your own words. <laughs> what does it mean? What does forward do? Is the problem is explaining it? Can you say, can you explain it in Korean? Example then? How can we improve the mutual stakeholders' capabilities? example of forward. Can anybody tell me what did forward do? Work together with who? Mm -hmm. How would you say industry partners another way in English? Competitors or similar companies, right? Work together with similar companies and suppliers to do what? Right. To make, to make their companies more environmentally friendly. Okay? So they learn from each other about making the company more environmentally friendly. Uh, so, Moon Ju Wan, can you give another example? How can we improve mutual stakeholders' capabilities? Okay, so we can prove their knowledge and skills of the other company, like our supplier, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, kind of thing. Education is a big word in this one, right? Education we can use for a lot of uh, situations. Okay. So. Then, of course, some of the stakeholder demands are going to be competing. <laughs> if the shareholder wants to get more profits now, and the employees want a higher salary, that could be competing, right? If we pay the employees a higher salary, maybe their productivity may increase, but it will take time okay, to reflect in the profits. But if the shareholder just wants a profit next next week or next month, if they increase the salary of the employee, it means lower profit for the company. So less money next month for the shareholder, for the owners. Okay? So, sometimes we, they can be competing with each other. So this is like a guideline, what to do, practically. Okay? So don't ignore any group. Okay? So don't ignore you know, we have all our different stakeholders. We're not going, we make a list of the stakeholders and all their claims, right? But we're not going to say, oh, just forget about that, right? Just get rid of that one, okay? So don't ignore anybody. So we have to take some action for either number one, meeting their claims, or number two, developing their capabilities, right? For some group. We don't make either or situations. Do you understand either or? Either or is when we have two choices, right? Either we do this or we do this. Okay, so don't make that situation. Either we meet our shareholders' claims or our employees' claims. So we shouldn't say, what are we going to do? Shareholders want lower salaries, employees want higher salaries, okay? I don't know, but we have to choose one, right? Either shareholders or employees, right? So we don't say that. We don't say we have to choose one, right? We prioritize claims with regard to the potential for short and long-term value production and competitive advantage. What does competitive advantage mean? 
Did anybody study marketing class? Hmm? How do you say in Korean? <laughs> what? Pigoi. <laughs> what is pigoi? Pigyo. Pigyo. What is pigyo yui? Pigyo means comparison. In Korean, right? Hmm? So what does what are, what is competitive advantage? In English, who can explain? <laughs> Relative advantage compared to? Compared to? Yes. Other companies, right? Can you give an example? What could my company do that's better than the other companies? More cheaper. Price, right? Or quality? Okay. So, do you understand the word prioritize? Do you prioritize things in your life? Yes. Yes? Well, people make a list of what's important and what's not important. Okay. So, we have all these claims. So, we have claims of employees. Okay. We have claims of shareholders. We have claims of suppliers. So, we have to, after we write out their claims, right, we have to decide which one is better for the company in the long term and the short term, right? So let's say that we think the employees one is better, so one, right? Then the state shareholders, then the suppliers. So we prioritize. Helps us to organize our thoughts, right? Which one is more important, which one is less important? When we think about the company and the advantage. Then the next thing is important, think creatively. How to meet, best meet claims and develop capabilities. You can also use benchmarking. What does benchmarking mean? Benchmarking is a practical tool for the business world. Not very theoretical, it's practical. What is benchmarking? Something following something good. Like good thing about the competition. Yes. So when I started working, usually the new graduate from the university, they learned a lot of theory and they think they know everything, right? So they think, I know everything now, I'm going to be the best at this job because I know everything. I don't need to look at anybody else, right? But my boss told me, why don't you go and look at what the other company is doing? They're doing very well. Why don't you go and look at what they're doing, right? And I thought, I don't need to go there. Why? You know all the theory things, right? But actually, it's quite practical. If, when people have more experience, they realize that benchmarking is quite practical, right? When I was in my job, another guy says to me, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Some people like that phrase. Do you understand reinvent the wheel? Somebody already discovered the wheel, right? For the car, okay? So, can I make a better thing than the wheel? Can I just use this, follow them? Or should I try to make my own one? Right? Or just follow the other people who made the wheel? Which is better? Follow the people who made the wheel already? Or try to make a car with the square? No? Are you sure? It might work. So, that's a phrase in English, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to invent the wheel again, right? It means that if somebody is doing something basic and correct, right, then we can look at that. So benchmarking means just looking at what the market leader is doing. Okay, so what is the market leader doing about these things, benchmarking? But also, when we do benchmarking, it's the same in any job. I do benchmarking against the other company, what are they doing? But I have to also think creatively to do better than them, sometimes I think, right? Add to what they're doing. So think creatively. So then establish the process to ensure continual improvement. So we'll discuss about this more in chapter three. Making some system or some process that means that people are continually improving. We gave one brief example here. I want my employees to improve their education. So I make some online training course. They get so many points. If they complete the online training, they get more points. They can get the promotion, or they can get the salary raise. Okay. 
make that kind of process. <clears throat> so we can put those things together. So these are our two steps. Identify the stakeholders, list their claims. Identify the mutual stakeholders, list about how we can develop their capabilities. Okay? Do you want to develop your capability? Yes? You're young, right? So you have a good chance to develop your capabilities. You understand developing capabilities? When you're your age, your brain is able to develop quickly, right? When you get old, it doesn't develop as easily. Right? So, then, after we list these things, we have to prioritize. Prioritize the claims and capabilities within each stakeholder group in terms of expected contribution to the company's success. Okay? Then, we have to take action. Okay? Don't ignore anybody. So do something for everybody, a little bit. Make good on claims that contribute to company success, means make these claims more important. Think creatively and make a continual improvement. So this is a kind of a stakeholder management framework, right? Framework for uh, making decisions in the company. So do you have any question about this, this framework here? That we just studied. So let's answer the last question. What steps should a manager follow if there is a conflict between stakeholder claims? So there is a conflict. Stakeholders want different things. Okay? How should a manager decide who gets what? Okay, so home. You answered the question. What should a, ma a manager do if there is a conflict between the claims? I think the manager should prioritize uh, what the manager gonna do. Uh, for example, uh, there is employee shareholder suppliers. Uh, we can make the prior priority. Mm. How do we make, what do we base the priority on? First we can do Do we like better? I like the suppliers better. So they have higher priority. What do we base the priority on? How do we make the priority? Based on what? Maybe they have to, uh, they have to talk about their priority. Mm. But what do we base the priority on? Just I like the supplier better because we went drinking together one day. No. So it's a higher priority because he's more important to me. 
This guy wouldn't go drinking. I don't like him. What? No. What, what do we base the priority on? How do we make the priority? For the internal uh, stakeholders. Internal stakeholders first, external stakeholders second? Yeah. No? Yes, based on what's better for the company in the long term and the short term, right? So we prioritize based on what's better for the company's success. Because at the end of the day, we have to remember that successful company is important, right? Successful company creates, pays taxes, creates jobs for the community. Okay? If there is no company, then we can't do the other things, right? So we have to also think about the success of the company, right? And then we have to prioritize the claims like that. Okay, but don't ignore anybody and think creatively. Okay? Commit to continual improvement. So there have been some criticisms of this uh, stakeholder management. And the first one is that it's not easy to measure. For example, profit is easy to measure. If we just focused on the profit, it's easy to measure. We made a big profit last year or a low profit the year before. But stakeholder management is not easy to measure. Okay? So how did we perform last year in our managing thing? It's not that easy to say, right? Maybe we gave more education to our employees, but how much percent did that help the company? It's hard to measure. So they say that there can be some managerial favoritism, like that kind of thing, right? Because it's hard to measure, the manager might say, oh, I should meet the supplier's claim. Okay? Maybe just because that's the favorite of the manager. The manager just says, I think this is better for the business. So it's hard to measure. Okay? Counter argument, we can try to tie it to some performance measures. We'll see later. Okay? Second one, all stakeholders uh, must be treated equ equally. Okay? In this case, we're prioritizing some claims. Right? So the counter argument is no stakeholder group is ignored. Okay, so we don't ignore anybody. But by attending to the stakeholder claims which drive the company success, this can also be better for society. Okay? Because we saw before if the company does well, it can also the society does well. Right? So we are not treating all the stakeholders exactly equally, but we're not ignoring anybody. And another criticism, stakeholder management requires a democratic form of corporate governance. Like, we need a special type of corporate governance for it to work. But actually, even though we have very top-down uh, corporate governance, with just one owner maybe running all the company, it can still be okay if they use the stakeholder management. So just generally, these days, stakeholder management is seen as the best system for making decisions in the company. Okay? Better than the neoclassical one. Some people still use neoclassical one, some companies still use balanced scorecard or triple bottom line, right? Or some other, we'll talk about the corporate social responsibility later, like economic, social and governance factors, right? Like triple balance or triple bottom line and balanced scorecard, but this is uh, better seen as the best uh, way for making the decisions in the company. So to sum up, managers should do what is right for their company and social welfare. Okay? In the neoclassical model, managers do what is right by optimizing profits for shareholders. So they think by optimizing profits for shareholders, we're also causing social welfare. <coughs> However, this model is very narrow doesn't consider the long-term value and is quite risky. The stakeholder management model is a far better model. It includes stakeholders' claims, developing capabilities, and also being socially and environmentally responsible. So do you have any questions about that so far? No? So just... Uh, <clears throat> At home, you can read the. This is finish. This is all included in the chapter one of the book, right? 
so we already covered the neoclassical model, but from the stakeholder down, and you can look at the either on the PPT or in the book, you can look at the tables and try to understand better about the two points by looking at the table, right? We won't go through all of the we went through some examples in the class, right? But at home you can read all of the uh, stakeholders, all of the claims, try to understand okay, the stakeholders and their claims. When you're dealing with the ethical dilemma for your project, you'll also be using this kind of system, right? It means that when you have the ethical dilemma, ethical dilemma means you have to make a decision ethical decision. So this, you'll be starting like this, listing your stakeholders, listing their claims. Okay? So it's good to be able to understand already what, who are usually the stakeholders and what kind of claims do they have. Okay? So <clears throat> just, do we have any question about this one? So, uh, I think I mentioned in the first week that we should make some groups, and we have an assignment in the first part of the course and an assignment in the second part of the course, right? And also we have the final, or the middle midterm presentation, which is the ethical dilemma. Okay, so the first assignment is based on this. Uh, <clears throat> it's basically we want to find a practical example from the real life. Okay, so we want to look at the company. Uh, find how do companies develop their stakeholder capabilities? So a little bit like benchmarking, right? Uh, benchmarking, looking at your companies in the real life the best practice, the companies who are doing very well, okay? And finding the uh, information, right? So, we can find this document on the website. This is 10% of your final grade, right? Uh, I think the date maybe needs to be changed. So, today is the 15th of March, so in April the 8th, Friday the 8th of April. Okay, Friday the 8th of April, it should say 8, right? Uh, <laughs> send it to my email address and it's 10% of your final grade. So what we have to do is find information about the company's stakeholder management. Use Google, type in the name of the company and stakeholder management or engagement, right? Just for example. Do you know how to search on Google? you write in here stakeholder engagement engagement is another engagement just means doing things together right with your stakeholders stakeholder engagement tell me a company any company a random company coca-cola Stakeholder engagement, the Coca-Cola company, right? So first of all, we can find on their website, they have that, right? Engaging stakeholders, the Coca-Cola company. Engaging our stakeholders. PDF, about stakeholder engagement, right? Here we can find an article from Forbes, how engaging stakeholders changes everything, right? Uh, just showing that stakeholder management is popular these days, right? We can see here words we've seen, continuous improvement. How we engage with state stakeholders, right? To understand engage with. Engage with means do things together. Okay? Uh, bottling partners. 
Coca-Cola has a bottling partner. So Coca-Cola, like in many countries, just sells them the drink. And then that company is a bottling company, puts the drink into the bottle, right? So they call them bottling partners. Okay? They do joint projects, joint business planning. They have a global environmental council with those guys. Right? We talked about Ford. Ford had the environmental management system, right? Uh, they have all the stakeholders here. Consumers, customers, communities, employees, government, NGOs, shareholders, suppliers, trade groups. And in is one we didn't see earlier, right? So, uh, communities, they have lectures at universities, sponsorship, right? Sponsor the local sports teams, that kind of thing. Employees, do you understand town hall meetings? U.S. thing. Obama does town hall meetings sometimes. Town hall meeting means they go to the hall and all the people can come together and anybody can ask Obama a question and he talks to them. So the manager or the CEO will go into the group of the employees and any of the employees can ask a question to the CEO. Okay? And they discuss and have their conversation. Uh, <coughs> health and safety communication programs, right? So. Maybe this is a little bit basic information, but we can try to find more details. Right? I'm just quickly searching on the Google okay, in a couple of minutes. So we have to give two examples of claims made by stakeholders on a company and how the company met those claims. And two examples of processes put in place by a company to improve the capabilities of mutual stakeholders. Okay? So we could see here, just I'm imagining Coca-Cola, a claim made by the employees in Coca-Cola. If we look back at our uh, PPT, we can say, see that one of the claims was participation for employees. Okay? Uh, employees here, participation. Okay? So we see participation here. You understand participation? They want to participate more in the company, right? So claim of the... Uh, stakeholder, employees want participation in Coca-Cola. How did the Coca-Cola meet the claim? What did we see on the website? How did they meet the... They did town hall meetings, right? So they, that's a pro, process they made. Okay, we're going to have town hall meetings every month. So employees can participate more in the company. So you need to just write about that, okay? Find out a little bit more detail about town hall meetings, Coca-Cola. Okay, they take place every month. The CEO and the CFO go there. What happens? Okay. Then explain about that. Find an example of another claim and another example. Okay. Then the same for improving the capabilities of mutual stakeholders. Okay. So if we go back to Coca-Cola. Uh, we can find here, we had like uh, the same situation as Ford, right? Global Environmental Council. So with their partners, bottling partners, they make a environmental council. What does council mean? Council is like meeting, right? Or group. So they meet up and they talk about the environmental plans and structures and so on. Okay, you can find out more information about that and explain about that, and then that's a process that Coca-Cola has. They take part in this council, and that's a process which helps them to develop their bottling partners' capability in the environment. Okay? So for example, Coca-Cola is doing bottling in, let's say, different countries have different environmental laws, right? Let's say China doesn't have as strong environmental laws as the US, right? So Coca-Cola has a bottling partner in China. And the bottling partner in China, I don't know, it's just imagination, right? They're taking all their glass bottles, just using once, throw in the river, right? Maybe it's not against the law in China, just my imagination, right? So Coca-Cola is going to meet with them at the Global Environmental Council. They're going to do a PPT. Everybody's going to be together. They'll have a picture of somebody throwing the bottle in the river. And they'll ask them, is it okay to throw bottles in the river? No. And then they'll say, yes. 
And they'll say, why? And they say, it's not against the law. It's illegal in our country to throw bottles in the river, right? And then Coca-Cola will say, well, it may be legal in your country, but actually that's bad for the environment because the glass stays in the river and damages the fish and never gets, goes away. And then they say, oh, really? But it's not illegal. Why is it not illegal? And then Coca-Cola say, well, different countries have different laws, environmental laws, right? But you're our partner, so why don't you not throw the bottle in the river anymore? Right? And then the company says, okay, we're not going to throw bottles in the river anymore. Thank you, Coca-Cola. We're going to save the environment. Do you get the idea? Right? That's a very simple example, but it, it's going to be more complicated like that. For example, we mentioned measuring the CO2. Many companies don't measure the CO2 that they emit, right? So they'll say to Coca-Cola, but we don't know how to measure the CO2. We don't know how to do it. And then Coca-Cola will say, that's okay, I'm going to send somebody to train you. Okay, do you understand? We have an expert, he's going to visit your factory for one week, and he's going to tell you how to measure the CO2 and set up the thing. And then they'll say, thank you Coca-Cola. <laughs> Right? Like that. Okay? And then, but also they will help Coca-Cola. It's not just one way, right? They're going to tell Coca-Cola, hey, we know you're really good at measuring your CO2, but, you know, we found a new way of using solar energy. Are you using solar energy, Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola will say, no. We're not using much solar energy. Why? Then the Chinese company will say, well, China is a leader in solar energy and we use a lot of solar energy. We have solar panels on the ceiling, on the roof. And Coca-Cola will say, oh, that's a great idea. Why don't we do that? And then the supplier will say, okay, I'll visit Coca-Cola for one week. And we can sell you a very good price, cheap solar panels. Right, you can put on your roof. Coca-Cola will say, okay, right, that's a council. Do you understand? So, we can just, can you write all that in one paragraph? Mm -hmm. Yes? So you, put, you give some example of this process, right? That's going to improve the capabilities. So then, for each example, give your opinion on how the company's action contributes to its long-term success. So for example, in the first case, uh, Coca-Cola made the town hall meeting. How does that contribute to the company's success? What do you think? Can anybody tell me? Coca-Cola makes a town hall meeting with ha which helps the employees to participate in the company. How is that going to contribute to the long-term success of the company? Maybe employees feel that the company needs their And therefore, they need uh, claims of employees, and mm. the employees can work better. Okay, so the employees can work better, right? So you just explain that, right? Give your opinion about how this contributes to the company's success. Okay, so we can also see there's a box here, which is potential for value creation, right? What happens? Increases employees' productivity, efficiency, okay? So do you have any question about this? project, we can see that we need to make a group of four members. Uh, we use chapter one of the book to help us, or the PowerPoint from the class, right? So do you have any question about this assignment, about the stakeholder understanding about the company stakeholder management? No? <coughs> so. Does anybody know their group? Yes? Four members? Not yet? So I'll send around a list. If you know your group, you can write just any random number next to your name of the people in your group. Just, you can also check your attendance for today. I started checking the people who answered the questions, right? So check your attendance, and If not, uh, I will... On the next class on Thursday, I will randomly assign you to the group. If you, so you can tell me before Thursday about your group. So, uh, Ha, ha, ha.
So we don't have much uh, time left, so we'll just introduce briefly the next topic that we're going to talk about in the next time. So we're going to talk about rights. We talked about human rights in Guan, right? And we're going to talk about duties and obligations. So, uh, <coughs> rights is things that, like, I have the right to freedom. Okay? You can't get a chain and tie me to the desk. Okay? I have a right to free movement or freedom. Okay, duties and obligations is more like things we need to do. Okay? So, do you understand duty? Something you need to do. Right? Obligation, I should do that. Okay? So, for example, uh, you are. You're, you start hitting her, right? She calls you a bad name, like Babo, right? And you get very angry and start punching her. Do I have any obligation? Does the teacher have any obligation to do something? Or duty? What's the teacher's duty in that case? Can I not just stay here and watch? With the fight? Good fight, go on! <laughs> Why not? Huh? I have to do that, right? That's my duty as a teacher. Okay, I can't just no, stop the fight, right? So that's like a duty or an obligation. Sometimes people have to do things, okay? And then you have some right, which is not to get punched, right? For safety in the workplace, so I have, or in the study place, so I have to have some obligation in this case. So, the problem is that sometimes, we already mentioned that countries have different laws, right? In some countries, underage labor is different than another country. In some countries, maybe 15 or 16 is okay for people to work in the company, okay? Or the police don't check about it, right? The police don't check about it. So, these are ideas which we think are rights, okay, and morally wrong. So, we have to consider these things as well. We think about, we already said we prioritize the claims, okay, but going another step, we prioritize the step claims with what is good for the company, what's best for the company in the long term. But taking another step, first, we have to make sure we're not violating anybody's rights, okay. For example, if the employee is asking for fair pay, and we're paying different salary to different women and men, that's violating the rights. So that's going to have to be at the top of the priorities. Okay? So we have to think about those things too. And management have the duty, just like I said, I have the duty, in this case, to do what is right. So people sometimes have a duty, it means an obligation, you have to do the right thing. Okay. This can conflict with what is perceived as morally good. So we are going to try and identify the rights of, of, and obligations of stakeholders and companies. Okay? What are the rights and what are the obligations? So this will be chapter two of the book. We'll look at it in the next class. Okay? So then let's uh, finish there for today. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.